Fugues are one of the oldest and most complex forms of classical music, so let's unwrap what they do in under five minutes. Fugue is a method of composing where you make versions of the same tune or melody run together but at different times. Think of a round London's like burning, London's Burning. London's Burning, fetch London's the burning, engines, fetch London's the burning, engines. Different strands of a melody start at different points but combine in a harmonious whole. Fetch the engines. Now, rounds, or canons as they are known musically, are far more simpler creatures to fugues. They rotate around a fixed tune at a fixed pitch. Pour on water. Fugues contain much more complex melodies, which don't rotate around the same tune at the same pitch, but which rather continue and expand at different pitches as other subjects or voices are added, which adds to the complexity. The form really suits the keyboard or choral compositions, where these separate voices can have a complementary effect on each other that can really fill out the musical space. Fugues really lit up the scene during the period known as the Baroque. Check out my video on periods of classical music for more on that subject. Telemann, Handel, Ema Vivaldi all composed fugues, each of them big wigs indeed. J.S. Bach is of course the undisputed champion of the form, and artificial intelligence agrees with this assessment. Look what happened when they asked ChatGBT for the best fugal works. More than half of them are Bach's. His standout works on the subject are the two books of preludes and fugues, which really are the first step for any composer who's studying fugue. And their final stop, almost certainly, the art of fugue. This was indeed Bach's last composition, demonstrating his utter commitment to the form. Bach died right in the middle of writing it. And you can even rather eerily hear the point at which pen stops scribbling and Bach's voice is finally lost to the world. Let's look at a Bach fugue in a little bit more detail. This is his F minor fugue from his second book of Preludes and Fugues. Always pay attention to the start of a fugue, as this may be your only chance to hear the subject clean. Now after the subject comes the counter subject, or answer. Meanwhile, the second voice or subject has begun. Traditionally, the second voice of a fugue comes in at the dominant of our original key. OK, back to our fugue and a third voice enters. Now, Bach has the chance to play with his themes. He can speed them up, slow them down, reverse or invert them. This takes place during sections known as episodes, before the composer reintroduces his subjects for another run. And one of the reasons I love this particular fugue is the episodes are relatively calm, harmonious places compared to the harmonic jungle fugues can often become. Melodious sections like this are rare in fugues because, as you can imagine, fugues are complicated beasts. Not only do you have to be aware of each of your separate strands of melody, but you have to ensure they're combining in a pleasing, harmonious way. And each subject entry compounds the complication. Which means mastering fugue is not a matter of mastering melody, but rather harmony. Which is why Bach, the master of harmony, was also the master of fugues. Most fugues worked with three or four voices, but Bach was happy writing fugues with five, even six voices. Crazy, I know. However, by the end of the Baroque, fugues were seen as rather old fashioned and fussy. The classical age brought a simplification of everything. Music and wigs of a lighter density were preferred. Fugues with all their musical clutter pretty much had to go, but that didn't mean the art form disappeared. Mozart and Haydn continued to write fugues, particularly in their choral works. After them, Beethoven, Mendelssohn, Brahms, Shostakovich, almost all composers would at least occasionally compose in a fugal form. Fugues, like any other generic form of composition, like for example the sonata form, feel like they might constrict a composer, whilst they actually can force a composer to bring more creative solutions. Now, you don't have to follow a fugue exactly all the way through its separate parts or a piece to appreciate it, or at least I can't. Take that F minor fugue. I'll follow the first voice, fine, then hear the intro of the second voice, but by then I've lost track of the... Oh, oh and there's a third voice, okay, I'm lost. I personally find fugues hard to play, far harder than the music itself, as my mind gets distracted by the separate melodic lines. The only way I could actually play this fugue was to record separate right and left hands, I play with four hands, not two. Fugues really make you feel mortal. So, don't worry, you don't have to treat fugues like an exact science. Composers themselves don't always compose exact fugues. It's music we describe as fugal, and that suits me, as I can get lost in fugal music more easily than follow every voice rigidly. Anyway, we'll pick this up next week, when I'm going to look at a few actual fugues in action. Till then, please like and subscribe, and thanks very much.